We're going to learn how to accept payments securely on our website using Bubble. And there's two really popular payment platforms that integrate automatically with Bubble. Those are Stripe and PayPal. We're going to connect Stripe today because it's very fast and user-friendly. It's also very flexible. It's available in a lot of different countries. If your country is not on this list, we are going to cover an, an exclusive content on our website, how to use the API connector to set up uh, a payment integration with a payment processor that runs in a country not included on this list. And you can model that process to do that with a different payment provider if uh, you want to. We'll also cover in future videos how to connect PayPal. If that's something that uh, by the end of this video in the comments, you guys let me know you really wanna know how to connect. Stripe also has a verification process, which we're gonna go through really soon, but it's typically really fast and will only take about a day. So we're on the Stripe website and that's where we're gonna start our journey here. So we're gonna create a Stripe account. So click on start now. In the register section, you wanna choose your email, password and things. So I'm gonna sign up with an account now we need to verify our email and then activate the Stripe account. So go to the email address and we can see there's an email from Stripe. Click on verify email address. Next up, we will we need to activate our Stripe account. To do that, you want to click on activate Stripe account, start now and fill out these forms. Just go through each of them step by step. Most, the information is self-explanatory and it's just information about your business. Stripe just wants to know that you're not going to commit any kind of fraud or launder money using their service. That's the purpose of this. You will most likely be approved after you've submitted this form within a day so that you can begin withdrawing funds from your Stripe account to your bank once they arrive. And this all, this process also involves you connecting your bank account right here to enable those transfers. So let's assume that we've already activated our account and we now, in order to successfully charge users on our website, we need to add four keys to the site. And we also want to test the charges. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into the developer section, click on API keys. And right here we can see we're viewing the test data. So um, we want to copy PK test, copy, and go into your plugin. So make sure you've added, make sure you search for plugin Stripe, type in Stripe. Uh, you wanna use this one here, which has been used by 23,000 apps. Uh, it's built by Bubble. So install that, click on done. And in here, we just copied the publishable key for the test data. So we wanna make sure that we've added publishable key test right in here. Next up, we've got the secret key test. So click on reveal test key secret. So again, copy this, this key and paste it. So I'm just gonna do this again, paste it, go. Whoops, add back that S. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing for the live information. So click right here, viewing test data. Now uh, that this is untoggled, so we're viewing the live data. So you want to copy PK Live again, put it into PK Live here. SK Live, uh, yours will be hidden. So what you want to do is click on the blurred hidden section to reveal the token. Uh, it's going to tell you that you can only see it one time. They just do that because of uh, security purposes, so that other people aren't uh, able to set up your Stripe account on their website. So. You want to copy that key, be sure you've copied it and paste it into there. Uh, this is just the dummy account, so that's why I am showing these, these tokens on the video. So, But it is good to know that you don't wanna share these with anyone else. The client ID live and development are not essential for just charging the users uh, directly as a, as a customer. When we want to pay money out to another person who's Stripe account is connected to our app. So for example, if we are handling a, a payroll application 
or possibly we are a marketplace website, then we're going to need those client IDs. And there's several more steps that we'll go through, which we won't discuss in this video and uh, we'll cover in future videos and, and courses on how to build a full marketplace. But uh, now we have enough information to test our checkout. So you want to go into the design tab, make sure that you've drawn a button on the page. We'll draw one right now. And I just labeled this button, pay $20. Really simple. Okay. And uh, you can use any kind of dynamic information as you can see for the charge. Uh, we'll see that momentarily. So click on start set workflow. We've got this pay $20 workflow. So I'm going to get rid of this. So click here to add an action, go into payments, charge the current user the email so here's something to think about is we can set up the um we can allow people to check out without putting in an email which is something that i actually would recommend to have a really frictionless process but you just want to make sure at some point they are you are able to gather that information um from them on the on the thank you page so that they can receive their receipt they know uh they're able to track their their product or whatever they, they purchased so that's how i would i would do that is i would just say okay if they're not let's put it in a workflow let's say if current user isn't logged in well then we're going to use this email that's basically going to be um let's just do calculate formula generate random string of like say nine digits of letters and numbers I think we can add on to it the end of this. Yep, so I'm going to add at, at uh, website.com or whatever your site is. Uh, and then for the amounts, as you can see here, we've got all these regular dynamic options for specifying how much we're going to charge the user. And this amount you want to specify in dollars, so or, or not just dollars, but basically you, if you put in 20, it would represent $20. If we put in euros and we added 20 right here, it would represent 20 euros. For the description, uh, this is what's going to show up on the pop-up when they're about to be charged. I'd recommend just describing in two to three words or less what your product or service is so that they're aware of what they're buying. In the statement description, that's what's going to show up on the bank. For that, you want it to be short. I believe it has to be 23 characters or less. So again, I would go with something similar to the description here. Button, uh, you can customize what you want this to say. I think pay is a perfectly fine thing to say. Uh, I would leave this success message chest and um, I would not just authorize a charge. I would just put it all the way through so that you can get paid uh, right then and there. So I'm going to put in an amount now of $20. And we're going to do this again. I'm going to right click copy right click paste and we're going to say current user is logged in and now we're going to say well if they are logged in well then we're just going to use their email so that way they are connected again adding that other information and just like that now i'm going to delete this old one we'll come up here and we can test this out so stripe has a number of different test cards that we can use and that way we don't have to pay real money to test out their uh, integration. So if we search for Stripe test cards, you'll see testing Stripe payments. Uh, I always use the 4242 cards. It's really simple. Uh, and as you can see here, it's a Visa card, any three digits, any future date. So go ahead and test out any of these cards we can use. I'll use the 4242 card. Going back here into our site, then we're gonna click preview. And we're going to click on pay $20. And here we're going to click the 4242442442. And any future date, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> any uh, CVC. And we'll click on pay $20. Boom. And the charge has gone through. No thanks. We're not going to save that card. Your credit card was successfully charged. Awesome, so that means that what we're doing is we're successfully charging the users on our website. So I think one other thing to point out now is uh, that it's good to have a ledger of the payments um, and to have some email sequences that are happening afterwards. So what I would recommend you do is after you have this payment action that's happening, you would want to add a, I would actually go in here and add, let me delete this. So we're gonna add a, add a transaction or payment data type so I'm gonna add payment as a data type 
underneath that I could have customer email uh, or did just I could just have it say email amount uh, this is a number and uh, date so in your dashboard we can go into here and we'll see that the payments will show up in our test data so go over into our test data one moment let's take a look at the payments there we go so as you can see there uh, both the payments are here we can see the date and other information so stripe will keep track of this for you i would recommend that uh, if you're going to be accepting payments from users that haven't yet set up an account on your website and provided email that you have the payment uh, object and an email in here and then on the thank you page of your site so after they paid you could take them to you could go to a page that you build it for thank you and have an input for their email then you would want to uh, you'd also want to say you basically want to create a payment right with the amount in this in our case it's twenty dollars and we'll leave the email alone but then we'd have another page called go to page and i'll create this new page called thank you um go create that page so Thank you. And the other thing about the thank you page, we'll go in here and just to show you how you'd pass that information along, we'd have this type of content called payment and uh, we'll leave that alone, the field for readable URL. We could just let that be. Um, let's go back now. And in here we would say result of step three. So now we're gonna pass this payment information to the thank you page. Uh, and then on that page, um, we'll just build it out really fast. You would have a, a input, right? So draw the input on the page and uh, email for your receipt, for example, something like this. And you would say, just like this, boom. Draw this out real quick. And this button could say, send me my receipt i didn't spell that right that's okay start set a workflow and in here we want to say make changes to a thing current page payments change another field email is equal to input email your receipts value and then you could send them an email so you would just send an email to input email your receipts value sender name your company whatever that is or your name subject uh order your order you can add a number to your order as well so if you wanted to um go back to the payment page and you know now we can create our own order number too so you have an order number this could be a you could do numbers to text so the text and then we would use the same calculate formula function so generate random string and i'll just say just use numbers and make it like nine digits long so again pretty long and then when you go back to the thank you page sending the email you'd be like your order number uh result step one's order number and then you go into hi uh thanks for your order blah 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 blah, blah. and then Here's the details of your product. And then another benefit that we have, in addition to, uh, to recording these transactions directly on Bubble, is that we can, if we have objects in our database, which we likely would if we're selling a product on our site, we would have a type called product or type called course, and that would have all the information about the particular product inside of it, like the name of the product, right? So add the name in there is add some add a photo of the products so it's like an image um and maybe like a description as well let's do that and uh under the payment you can now add product directly under it as well so now when you go to send your it could be product or products so if you had multiple more than one so then what you can do is when uh you go back to the index page you would some somewhere on the page you might have uh this there might be basically like let's i'm going to group this into a group really quick so the button is inside of a group 
and we'll just assume that this group has some kind of product in it um, and you've added that information on them there so then when we create this new payment we can set another field called product is equal to parent groups product right so now when we go to send the thank you email we can also specify we could say here's the details of your product and we can say okay well result of step one right which is the payment uh, we could say the payments products name payments products description etc to contain that information and something like you know thanks a bunch your name you know, heart company or whatever something like that so that's it you are now all ready to accept payments on your website with stripe i strongly encourage you to check out our website at newagedevelopment.bubbleapps.io the link will be down below this video and create an account on our website you can access our private forum where we regularly visit to answer questions about bubble development to help you get unstuck if you get stuck and you have a bug in your website or your app or if you're looking for advice on getting clients as a web developer, we also talk about that. Uh, anything related to bubble development, you'll find in there. And the goal of this website is to turn you into an expert uh, and give you the tools that you need and the skills to be able to build any kind of website or application that you want uh, online and uh, be able to, you can unleash your creativity online. That's our goal. So definitely wanna see you there and I'm looking forward to seeing you there.